Hi, I'm Sean from Housefly, and tonight I'm going to tie an EP Sparkle Dun. So this is a fly that you can closely imitate just about any mayfly species uh, in existence. Just by changing the color of the body and maybe the wing material if you wanted, um, you can imitate, I fish this for sulfurs, um, I fish it for our Hendrickson's, isos, blue wing olives, you name it. It's a, it's a great do-it-all kind of a pattern. So the hook I have in the vise is a Fulling Mill 50-50 Ultimate Dry, and this is a barbless hook. Um, I'm really I'm really a big fan of this one, but uh, you can use just about any dry fly hook you want for this pattern. It really doesn't matter. This is just the one that I prefer. So to start things off, in uh, my bobbin holder I have a, a Danville 6.0, and it's uh, like a, a pale yellow um, cream kind of a color, and that's just to kind of help match the overall tone of this uh, sulfur EP sparkle done that I'm going to tie. So I already started with my thread on the hook and next I'm going to tie in some hairline Antron yarn and the color for this one is dark brown and I usually just use dark brown on pretty much all of my uh, sparkle done style flies and this is the material that we're going to use to imitate the shuck of uh, the mayfly nymph. So this fly is meant to imitate a mayfly uh, that's trying to poke through the surface film and emerge and become a dun, but it's still got part of its nymphal shuck attached to its rear end. So this material in particular, when it comes off of this spool, it's a little bit thicker than I typically like uh, to leave my shuck. So I'll actually take this material off of the spool and then I'll just kind of split the materials in half, at least for uh, like 14s and 16s. I might even pull out some more material uh, if I was going to tie something smaller. But I've already split this one in half. I've got a little hank of material here. And I'm just going to start by capturing this on the top of the hook shank and then tying it in rearward. And then I'll bring my thread back up. And I'll trim out this front portion. And now this trailing shuck, I typically like to be about the length of the body. So a real simple way to trim this is just to pull the material up over the hook eye and then trim it off right about at the hook eye. And that'll give you the perfect length trailing shuck every time. It'll help you keep everything consistent. So the next material I have that I'm gonna tie in is this, uh, this is EP trigger point fiber. And the color for this one is uh, caddis gray, you know, any kind of like light done color is what I prefer to use on pretty much all of my mayflies. Um, I'm really not a firm believer in matching wing colors on flies. What's important to me is I want to have a wing that uh, that's easily visible. Um, and so a lot of these lighter done colors uh, are just a lot easier to see on the water. So as you can see here, these hanks of material, um, you're going to have to pull some of the EP fiber off in order to uh, in order to have a, a workable piece of material to um, to tie your wing in with, and uh, there's no real easy way to describe how much of this material you're going to need. It's it you'll need a little bit more for larger flies, a little bit less for smaller. It's something that's going to just take some trial and error to get used to. But um, I did notice that uh, if I pull this material taut, it's its overall width is about an eighth of an inch. So you could try to kind of use that as a, a standard um, to tie your wings with as a starting point maybe, and then um, just go from there, add a little bit more if you think you need more or less, depending on the size fly you're gonna tie. But to tie this wing in, I'm gonna leave my thread hanging, uh, I'd say about two eye lengths uh, back on the hook shank. And then I'm gonna extend this wing material forward and I'm going to take a couple of looser capturing wraps and then I'm going to start to really tighten up and crank down on this wing to fix everything in place. So I've just taken three nice tight wraps there and then in order to start propping this wing up a little bit I'm going to take a few wraps in the front of the wing towards the hook eye and then build up a little taper and also a thread well right in front of that wing to start orienting it in the upward position. Now I'm going to trim out this back section of material here 
And to get a closer cut, I like to twist the material and then work my thread or my scissors in there close to the thread base and trim it off close. So now I'll kind of just smooth this out a little bit. Maybe work up a slight taper in behind the wing. Just kind of check out how things are looking. And now I'm going to add for uh, the body, I'm going to use a micro fine uh, dry fly dubbing. And this one is just sulfur yellow from Hairline. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to start by using the tiniest little bits of this dubbing. I mean, probably so little that you can't even really see it right now. Just the tiniest little wisps. And I'm going to start making a, a nice tight dubbing noodle. I'm just going to try to make this as tight as I possibly can. Try to keep it from soaking up too much water. And now I'm going to bring that noodle right to where my shuck starts off the back of the hook there. Start making nice even touching wraps up towards the head of the fly. Right up to the back of the wing. And then before I go in front, I'm just going to put on the remainder of the dubbing that I'm going to need for this body. Again, just going sparse, make a nice tight noodle. So I'm going to start by bringing my noodle right up to behind the eye and then use that as a base to start going rearward and put some wraps tight up against the front of that wing to help prop it up. And then I'm going to do about a three or four turn whip finish. Cut that off close. You can add a little uh, dab of your favorite head cement later. Just going to make sure I don't have any crazy fibers hanging off the bottom that I don't need to trim out. And now for the wing, to trim the wing, all you really need to do is you want to make the, the wing length about the overall length of the body of the fly, so the yellow portion. And in order to do that, I'm going to fold the wing down towards the rear of the hook. And I'm going to look at where the end of the body is here. And then I'm going to add on the additional length in the front of the wing. So I'll add on an extra, I don't know, three or four millimeters past the body and trim the wing off there. And then I'll just kind of use my fingers to get everything oriented the way I want and check it out. And this looks pretty good. So this is a fly that's going to ride nice and low in the, in the uh, surface film, which usually kind of represents a more vulnerable insect to the trout. And they kind of eat these lower riding flies much better than they might eat uh, a more high riding like hackled fly in almost all cases. It's a really great fly for some of our more technical tailwater fisheries out here in the Northeast. Um, so yeah, give this one a shot. Don't be afraid to change the body material or the body colors um, to represent any mayfly hatch that you, that you have on your local waters. And um, all the materials will be listed in the description here, along with links to our website at houseflyfishing.com to uh, purchase this stuff. So thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope it helped out. And uh, feel free to reach out with any questions.